Hey Vault Dwellers, JV here and today I'm sharing Bethesda's Fixes Roadmap for Fallout 76. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more Fallout 76 videos just like this. Over the holiday, things have been really rough for this game. The patch seems to have either broken more things or people have discovered more issues with 76. People interpreted Bethesda's lack of communication as radio silence. I think it's more likely that they're human beings who are spending time with their family like most other people, but Regardless, we have a new update this morning. We're going to read through it in its entirety, but if you'd like to check it out for yourselves, link is in the description below. We know you're frustrated and angry at the state of things right now, whether it's the issues you're running into in the game or the lack of communication about fixes, updates, or news. To be clear, this account is run by us, Bethesda Game Studios community team. Yesterday, we posted to let you know that we're still here gathering your feedback and, more importantly, working to get info from the team we can share. We didn't want you to think that radio silence meant nothing was happening. We're sorry and understand this was not the right approach, and we'll work better to make a better bridge between you and the dev team at BGS. We're posting an article today that has further information about upcoming updates that were mentioned a few weeks ago. In addition, we're aiming to get you the patch notes for these updates quicker, and we'll have them available for December 4th's update later this week probably Thursday or Friday. We'd like to make these articles weekly to make sure that you know what the studio is working on as it relates to issues you may be experiencing, quality of life requests you have, or new features they're excited to share. So far, we have an apology about lack of communication. I think that's fair, especially considering that the game just came out recently. It was a holiday weekend, like I mentioned, but yeah, I do feel that the state of the game maybe required somebody to be on top of things. We also have promises for weekly updates, which I believe they've mentioned before, and then also talking about getting the patch notes quicker, which is nice. I want quicker and more detailed patches. I think that's best for everyone. Next week's update on December 4th will bring an increase to the stash limit, as well as a variety of performance and stability improvements, balance changes, and multiple bug fixes to the game. We'll have full patch notes available later this week ahead of Tuesday's update, but some notable issues being addressed in this update include the stash limit is being increased. We know many of you have been asking for an adjustment to the stash storage limit, and we're happy to share that we're increasing it from 400 to 600. While this is somewhat conservative, we plan to increase the storage cap further once we verify that this change will not negatively impact the stability of the game. This is huge, and I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting the stash limit increase this soon. It's nice to see it in early early December when they gave us a time frame of the next six weeks two weeks ago. That being said, going up to 600 is not a huge change. It's nice. It's not where I think we should be. But at the same time, stability to me must be above all else. This game does not perform well. It does not run well. That should be most important to them, in my opinion. Next, for boss loot, players should correctly receive two or three items after taking down a boss, depending on the creature's dif difficulty or level. You were definitely dropping way more than that, so that'll be toned down. For the cryolator, players hit with the cryolator are now chilled, frosted, or frozen, depending on how many times they are hit. The duration of movement speed reductions applied by these effects have been decreased from two hours to 30 seconds. I don't know if you guys heard about this, but essentially, if you were hit by the cryolator at all, you were slowed, frozen, chilled, whatever it is, for two hours. And some people thought it was permanent. That was obviously not correct, but two hours is long enough to think that it will last forever. Next, they resolved an issue affecting players who die while over-encumbered that only allowed them to respawn at 76. Now, over-encumbered players will be able to respawn at the nearest discovered map marker. And then finally, if you're stuck in power armor, they've addressed an issue in the patch that would cause players to become stuck, but they're also aware there are additional cases where it can occur, and they are investigating them. As I mentioned in my Fallout 76 Must Be Fixed video from last week, I had a buddy who actually had another friend jump into his power armor and then pretty much get stuck in it permanently. That has been fixed and the power armor has been returned. But yeah, this is an issue that shouldn't be happening. And so I hope we get more updates on this and I hope they come in the next update as well. On to the December 11th update. It's currently planned for the following week. Like previous patches, it will include a variety of bug fixes, but we're also planning to bring some more notable changes and features to the game. Here's a preview of those features and changes, but the full list will be in the patch notes. First is all of those PC features that were missing on launch. A push to talk setting for voice chat, 21 by 9 resolution support, and an FOV setting are all being implemented onto PC with this update. 
this is awesome. This is really cool that this is happening. There are plenty of other issues with this game, but I think you have to take your victories where they come, especially if you're a fan of the game. Along with that, I think this is huge. This special respec. After level 50, you'll be able to choose between a new perk card or moving a special point you had previously allocated. So my initial thoughts here, you're kind of delaying further customization of your character and deciding to pivot towards respecking every time you level up. And that's an okay compromise to me. Ideally, I would like to go to a vendor and spend, you know, a thousand caps to fully, you know, wipe everything at once. It sounds like that's not the direction Bethesda wanted to go in for respecking. I don't know how that hard that is compared to what they've implemented here. But again, I'm happy that this made it into the game less than a month after launch. The next two changes are for camps. First off, your placement on login. You will no longer automatically have your camp blueprinted and stored if someone is occupying your location when you log in. Instead, you'll get a notification that your space is occupied. If you decide to find a new home for your camp on that server, it will be free to do so. However, if you don't attempt to place down your camp, you'll be able to switch to a new server where that spot is vacant and your camp will be fully assembled and waiting for you. This is a feature that I think has flown under the radar in terms of content creators and like YouTube videos and streamers and whatnot, but on the subreddit, it's been very loud, and I think this is an excellent solution to a problem so many people were very loud about. If you didn't know, if you try to move your camp or you try to log in and someone is in your spot when you had like a water purifier or crops or anything like that, that stuff would be destroyed and it kind of sucked. Now players will get a heads up like, hey, someone's in your space. Do you want to find another server where no one will be there so you'll still have your camp? It's exactly the solution that we needed. So very happy to see that. And then next we have the bulldozer camp feature that will allow you to remove small trees, rocks, and other obstructions so it's easier to create and place your camp when and where you want. You can use it to clear these items from the surrounding area to make your camp feel more like home. This is something I totally did not expect, but sounds nice. I know that the camp system can be pretty finicky. If there's a rock in the way and you can't place your foundation and it's annoying, you can't place your floor, so on and so forth. I hope this is a good solution for that as well. I wanted to evaluate all of these changes and features on their own. I think that's the most fair way to do it because Yes, the game is in a really bad state right now, but every little improvement, I think, is a good thing. That being said, my priority is not on any features, regardless of how cool they might be or how helpful they would be for my game and for everyone else. I think it should be on fixing the game and lifting this game to a state of, yeah, this is how it should have been released versus Oh my goodness, this game does not run well, it's not stable, it has too many bugs that affect too many people's experiences. So I genuinely hope that on Thursday or Friday we see a long list of bugs that are being addressed and hope hopefully fixed. Actually, what I'd really like to see is a running list of things that Bethesda has said, yes, we know this is an issue and this is something that we're working on. Sort of a running bug fix list that everyone can look at and say, okay, they know about this issue. The more I've played and been able to digest this game, I think one thing that really stings for me is just the volume of little things that seem to be oversights that Bethesda missed. Like the cryolator thing, or the fact that there are zero legendary hunting rifles in the game. You literally cannot find a legendary hunting rifle because they don't exist. Or the lever action reload glitch, which I believe was present in Fallout 4 and was never really addressed and seemed to almost be copy pasted into this game. It's concerning to me that this stuff either slipped through the cracks in QA or was deemed okay and ready for launch. You know, we'll fix it later. Hopefully that's not the you know mantra that they're using at Bethesda. As I mentioned in my video last week, I think Bethesda is in not backpedal mode, but kind of rebuild mode, rebound mode. They need to bounce back from this number one awful press and number two, the state of the game is genuinely not great, regardless of how you feel about it. If I were to give Bethesda a game plan or a pep talk on what they need to do to get this game back where it should be, I'd say be as communicative as possible. I love the idea of these weekly updates. I love knowing what's coming to the game, what devs are working on, and what new features are coming. But at the same time, we really should have a running list of issues that they know about, that they're aware of, and that they are going to address or plan to address in the future. I think that would help a lot of people give peace of mind and ease people that are worried that Bethesda is ignoring certain issues because it certainly seems like that 
on the surface when in reality they could be working on this stuff and they're just not telling us. And so as they said, communication moving forward is going to be better. We need to hold them to that because this game needs to improve. In the comment section, tell me which bugs or issues need to be addressed for you. Share your thoughts below. If you enjoyed the video, remember to subscribe and hit the bell for more Fallout 76 content like my last video where I review the Pharma Pharma perk card. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time.